in honor of Jerry Springer, the lie detector test has determined that was a lie. Dude, I, by the way, I watched a lot of Jerry Springer growing up because, I mean, honestly, I think it was just the simpler time in the, in the mid-90s, in the late 90s. My parents would watch Jerry Springer. They're like smart people. They were in their 30s or 40s at the time. They would be like, oh, Jerry Springer's on? And as my, like, they're erudite people. They would be like, that's appointment television. And then I, I watched it as a child, right? I, it had been a long time since I'd seen it. I watched a clip when Jerry Springer died. And let's just say they bring out some people that the audience is not big fans of. Within two seconds, the audience rushed the stage and just started throwing haymakers at the guests. I didn't, I forgot that the, it just pops off immediately. There's no like bubbling and then like they try to hold them back. It's literally just like they go to sit in their chair and it's just like a haymaker comes and pops them in the, in the face. They can't put that on television anymore. Now you go on TV, they're like, please don't wear a shirt with a complicated pattern. Our cameras can't handle it. Back in the day, they were like, you know, let's put two people on like complete violent opposite ends of the political spectrum sitting right next to each other. And when they, dude, that's the other thing. When, they, when the brawl starts, nobody in the audience gasps or anything. It's like immediate cheers and whooping and stuff like that. It's crazy, dude. Like they bring out the racists and then the audience goes, boo. And then people start throwing fists and they're immediately like, yeah, get him. It's so good. And then at the end of the show, Jerry Springer has the audacity to say, take care of yourselves and each other. What a great show. They need to bring it back, man. Anyway, um, like I said, we're going to go faster today. $10 billion. It's a very diversified economy. Seats. <laughs> they export a lot of seats. El electricity. Coca-Cola. I know this. I don't know what this is, but I know that it's not what you're going to say that it is. Isn't this like a byproduct of mining or something? It's not La Fuente, okay? It's a coal product, thank you. Leather footwear, craft paper, motor vehicle parts, explosive ammunition, plastic building materials. I have no idea. Iron. Iron. I have no clue. $10 billion is like relatively low. It's a mountainous area with forests, I'm assuming, because it has wood and then lots of minerals. And cows. You know what I'm thinking immediately is Argentina, because they have cows, but they're exporting no beef. So that doesn't make sense. So let's close that. Um, well, let's just take it up one. Let's go. Oh, but Chile would have some like seafood or something. Milk. Let's take something in Central Asia. Let's take like an Uzbekistan. It's mountainous. It's uh, no water nearby. No like, you know, coast nearby. It's 4,000 kilometers west of Uzbekistan. This could put us like around the Black Sea. Um... Maybe, or maybe it could be like um, uh, Kazakhstan. No, Kazakhstan is way north. I'm getting, I need to envision the world map in my head and that takes a lot of work for me. Just give me a second here. I feel like it, it would be a country that's like around Georgia, but maybe not Georgia, but let's just see if I'm at least in the ballpark here. <clears throat> okay, it's further than Georgia. Georgia's a big stop, like, I use that as a signpost to figure out where we're going. This could be 2,000 kilometers away from Georgia. Electricity. Probably the coal, if I had to guess. Um, 2,000 kilometers. Could this be like... Yeah. 
Iran? No, that was a very stupid guess. It's not a smart guess. Does this put us like into um, the Balkans now? 3,300 kilometers away from Iran. Could this perhaps put us in like a Serbia? Ooh! Uh, to the west of Serbia is Albania and Montenegro. Very mountainous, very mountainous India. Oh, come on. Come on. It's Alba No, but we had Albania before. It's like Croatia, Albania, Montenegro. I don't think it's Croatia, though. There's no Game of Thrones up here. Croatia, I would assume Croatia would be more than 10 billion too. I might be wrong. I'm going to go Croatia. I think it might be Albania though. Maybe I had it in another. They won't even let me guess it. They, it's Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> oh. Man, I've been getting my ass kicked by Trado lately. We got close though. Three ninety nines in a row. It's pain. We're ready for um, like the United States of America tradle. I think the world is ready. Please look actual Georgia up. Bro, I know where Georgia is. That's where they filmed The Walking Dead. So if I, with no borders on the map, stop spinning, you piece of junk. Me, when I'm Superman and I'm trying to spin around the world backwards to go back in time. Georgia is right here. Is this correct? It's right here? Yes. Okay, there you go. I know where it is. I guess we could just type it. Look at that. It's right there. And Iran? Hmm. Right here? Is this Iran? No. Close, though. It's more west. It's like here? It's to the right. Okay, it's, it's the mountains here. Okay, fair enough. That's my bad. I, honestly, I would have said it was due south of Georgia. Okay, 7,000 kilometers from Georgia. Let's err on the side of they're going to make this hard. Kyrgyzstan, take me to Central Asia. That is slightly closer, which to me means that... It could be like uh, here, but I'm thinking due to the curvature of the earth, it might be a little bit messed up too. Kyrgyzstan is warmer, but not by a ton. I'm almost thinking like it could be Thailand. Oh, that's very, very warm indeed, good sir. Very warm indeed. How about skip Malaysia and take me straight to Singapore? Oh, he's not, he is beating the washed allegations. That was a good one. We used our brain on that one. Sorry, let me pause my Steam download here. It's making all the dulls slow, which means I probably need to get a new computer. <laughs> Yo, what an advertisement, man. I saw this advertisement at the store yesterday. Spring into summer. 4% financing on a GMC 2023 terrain. Plus, eligible Costco members receive $750 in bonus cash. Well, I don't really want a 
GMC SUV, but hey, $1,000 in bonus cash? How, how could I afford not to? Anyway, this is China. You guessed correctly on first try out of one tries. I'm crazy. Just buy the car, sell the car, and then put the 750 into a money market account. You are you're about six months away from being lampooned on the TikTok investor meme account. <laughs> Did you see the, the TikTok of the lady who didn't realize that she had a 74-month amortization period on her car? Or the guy in tears because he was like, he didn't realize the difference between leasing and buying. So he thought at the end of his lease, he'd owned his car. And then they, like when his lease expired, the company was like, do you want to buy your car for like $22,000? And he's like, what? I already paid for it. Okay, this is June 17th, 2016. A movie opens to 135 from Walt Disney. That's a banger. <laughs> That's a big opening. That could be um, the first Spider-Man in the MCU. That could be Spider-Man Homecoming. No. Okay, am I really gonna... It stars Albert Brooks. Oh, it's Finding Dory. Okay, it's Finding Dory. My mistake. I'll take my 160 on that, though. Warner Brothers open to 35 million. Pre still pretty good. It's an action comedy crime mystery starring Kevin Hart. Comedy crime mystery? It's Get Hard. I don't know all the Kevin Hart movies, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson. Wait, wait, wait. I should know this one. Saving the world takes a little heart and a big Johnson. You can't do that. You can't break the fourth wall in the tagline. That's how I know this movie's pure ass. How can you... You can't... The movie doesn't know that the actors are real people. You know what I mean? Unless they're named Hart and Johnson in the movie. I don't know the name of this movie. I don't know the name. Let's, let's reveal all hints. After he reunites from an, with an old pal through Facebook, a mild-mannered accountant is lured into the world of international espionage. I simply don't know it. That is central intelligence. I've definitely seen the poster. I feel, aren't, aren't there like a staggering amount of Kevin Hart movies? And I don't have a strong opinion on Kevin Hart one way or the other. Aren't they all like he's like a normal guy, but then he gets paired up with somebody who's like a cop or a hardened criminal or is really, really tall and he's not very tall or something like that? And then he's like, I see how it is. You think you can push me around just because I'm short and you're really tall. Well, let me tell you. Okay, I'll let you push me around a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry I said anything. Warner Brothers Weekend 2, $71 million. Minus 63% in his second week. That's, that's indicative of a, a fairly big release that did not review well with audiences. That's, or, or people rushed out to see it opening weekend. That's not a great performance here. It's a horror thriller starring Patrick Wilson. This is one of the 17 Insidious movies. Let's call this Chapter 2. Let's call this Chapter 3. Let's call this Insidious. You know the one I'm talking about. I've never seen the movies, but every poster is like Vera Farmiga going like, and then behind her, there's like a ghost with long hair going. Is this Annabelle? <laughs> is, is Annabelle part of Insidious? I don't know. I only know Megan. Okay, Lionsgate. This is not a good weekend for me. It's a crime thriller action mystery starring Jesse Eisenberg. It's Now You See Me Too. 
still can't believe they didn't call call it now you don't but that's fine now you see me now now you don't would have been a great reason for them to have uh people would have watched the sequel even if it sucked if the first one was called now you see me and the second one was called now you don't but anyway universal did not do very well at the box office considering it's the summer stars travis fimmel it's an action adventure fantasy stars travis fimmel tagline two worlds one home Actor two, Paula Patton. Is this divergent? It sounds like it could be about two worlds. Is this diver? Is this Allegiant? Is that an airline? Is this divergence? <laughs> I don't. I don't know the answer. Reveal all hints. It's Warcraft. It's War. I just Azeroth immediately. Okay. Wow. That I didn't realize it bombed that hard. I knew it kind of bombed, but 160 million dollar budget. 40. I guess it did make a ton of money overseas. Holy cow! Domestically, it got its ass beat though. I right, never. Mind. I thought it was a huge bomb, but uh, big ups to international audiences. I guess. I don't know. They never made a sequel. Uh, I, listen, I know it's an Insidious movie, right? Or is this Pet Cemetery? That's the only other one I could... I, I know Patrick Wilson was in that. No? Okay. Reveal all hints. The next true story from the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Lorraine and Ed Warren traveled to North London to help a single mother raising four children alone in a house... Plagued by malicious spirits. Sin City is the last key. Yep, okay. <laughs> Didn't do great today, but it, we, we got a couple. Oh, no, wait, it's not. It's The Conjuring 2. My mistake. My mistake. Wait, isn't it, aren't Insidious and The Conjuring in the same universe? No. But Patrick Wilson is in Insidious, right? Yes. That's fucking confusing if you've never seen any of them. The Conjuring and Annabelle are in the same world. What's the, what's the one with the, every poster is Patrick Stewart shaving in the mirror and then a, a ghost lady behind him going. But you can like barely see her because she's in the shadows. You know what I mean? Or she's going... I say Patrick Stewart. I mean, Patrick uh, Wilson, whatever. The other Patrick. N Nolan Patrick. Okay, put Cine to Nerdle, we can do something here. Mandy Moore, Walk to Remember. Denzel Washington, Football, Remember the Titans. Sandra Bullock is also in a football movie called um, The Blind Side, which is based on a book by Michael Lewis. But we'll figure out how to make that work. Just remember in your head, blind, blind Side. Now I see Hades animated go the distance. What? They, they, they stole a swap from me! Post-apocalyptic Mila Kunis Denzel Washington. Is, this must be the Book of Eli. Now I'm all, I'm all confused now because the, the game had a little hiccup. Okay, well just give me a second here, okay? This is the Book of Eli. So maybe remember the Titans is actually the other one. Denzel Washington football. Titans. Give me a second. Because <laughs> also, Mandy Moore, A Walk to Remember, is based on a book. But it's not animated. This one's fucking confusing. I also feel like, is this not the guy from The Blind Side? A, a romance is A Walk to Remember, okay? And then you hard swap these ones. Titans! Because of the Titans from Hercules. And then Denzel Washington football... 
Remember the Titans. Okay, okay. <clears throat> There's what was the one that was the red herring here? Or maybe there wasn't one. <laughs> he went Jamie Lee Curtis mode. Book. Oh yeah, because book was part of like the blind side was also based on a book. A lot of people don't know that, but I'm very well read. Sing, Go the Distance. I don't know it. I've never seen Hercules. I really only know Zero to Hero. And even then, all I really know is Zero to Hero in no time flat. But she kind of goes Tina Turner mode in the song, for sure. <sighs> okay. Okay. Memento, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. These are movie, uh, 50 First Dates. These are movies with memory loss. Finding Dory. Finding Dory, Eternal Sunshine, Memento, 50 First Dates. Movies that take place at sea. Master and Commander, Poseidon, Jaws. <clears throat> Cloud Atlas, I'm assuming. Uh, and let me think here. Let me think here. Like movies with child actors. Second movie in a franchise. Movies directed by the Wachowskis. Movies direct there's a there's a mo movies directed by Christopher Columbus, Home Alone, and the first Harry Potter. Movies with boats. Which one of these movies has a boat in it? Am I am I losing my mind? Oh, it is Cloud Atlas. What happened? Or is Finding Dory the connection here? Hang on, let me hard swap for a second. These are all movies that had made the most money at the box office the year they came out. Okay, and then hard swap me here. I'm a little confused, but we've got, we got our connection, which is usually the hardest part. We got memory loss and the ocean. How are these all connected? <laughs> How are Olympus Has Fallen, Apollo 13, and Cloud Atlas connected? Movies that have... <laughs> the President. Movies that have the President in them. I feel like there's like a Best Picture nominees category in here. Like maybe There Will Be Blood, The Revenant, Apollo 13, or Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or I don't know, Jaws. What that, this is connected to something too. It's like, I'm, I'm so lost. Probably because I didn't do all the columns first, and now I've got this stupid connection in the middle I'm trying to figure out. Acclaimed director's second movies. Movies with Jim Carrey, movies with Kate Winslet, movies with Elijah Wood, movies with um, Mark Ruffalo, movies with Tom Wilkinson, movies where there's robberies, movies where someone gets left alone, movies where someone should have died from their injuries but didn't. Joe Pesci, Home Alone, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant. Movies where there's uh, hijinks, There Will Be Blood, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Movies featuring the American flag. Movies that take place, there's a little outer space in some of these, maybe. Movies, I'm, I'm washed, I'm washed. I'm washed. It's the shapes, I'm sorry. I feel like these were all insanely high-grossing movies. Empire Strikes Back, Harry Potter, Jaws. Would you hard swap a Home Alone in there? <laughs> Composer John Williams. Not what I was thinking, but I'll take it. Okay. 
John, you tell me John Williams did da na da na da na. I honestly thought that was like Stravinsky. Now here. Ah, uh, uh, movies with movies that feature travel <sighs> of some sort. A journey, a hero's journey. Movies that feature um just let me think about it for a second. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Movies that feature uh, disaster. Olympus Has Fallen. Poseidon. Apollo 13. Is, is good. Okay, I don't really know what the theme is, but we, we got there. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Revenant, There Will Be Blood, Master and Commander. What are historical epics? 50 First Dates, Memento, Eternal Sunshine, Finding Dory, Memory Loss, Olympus Has Fallen, Apollo 13, Cloud Atlas, Poseidon. Movies with a, a disaster. Home Alone, The Empire Strikes Back, Philosopher's Stone, Jaws, John Williams, The Ocean. Title Greek. The title is Greek mythology. Oh! Cloud Strife, my favorite Greek god. And the award for best cinematography? Are you crazy? I'm never gonna get that. Anyway, we got there. That was a good one. You literally did? I think I said, I said historical epics, right? Holy cow, we're only on movie to movie. From Beetlejuice to The Farewell. Okay, this is tough for me. Because the only person I know in The Farewell is Aquafina, And she's also in the Oceans movie. And she's also in Shang-Chi with Tony Lung and Michelle Yeoh. But we just had to get from like Michael Keaton to Michelle Yeoh. We're more likely to get to like Sandra Bullock. I feel like we can get like Michael Keaton to Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality with William Shatner and Michael Caine. Come on, you gotta be able to get from, how could you not get from Michael? Okay, I, I think we got something, okay? Spoilers, by the way, I've not seen it, but I've seen the trailer. Give me Michael Keaton. Give me The Flash, excuse me. Give me a DC Universe movie. Michael Keaton's in Morbius, bro. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, I haven't seen Morbius yet. But we gotta be able to get to Michael Caine. The Founder features Ron Swanson. Binky Nelson on Pacified. I'm not familiar with that. Birdman takes you to Emma Stone. I'm sure there's a way to get there from here. Though I'm, I'm just trying to find my way, okay? Emma Stone, Ed Norton. You could get to like the amazing Spider-Man. But how do you get to Michael Caine from there? It's a great question. You can get to Ed Norton. Takes you to the Incredible Hulk. Takes you to Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler takes you to... Ah! Birdman. How was I doing this? Ed Norton. This is a roundabout path, and I still don't have the terminus yet. Ed Norton. Hulk me. Liv Tyler me. Where did I say we were going with this one? Armageddon. <laughs> ben Affleck. That then takes us into the DC Cinematic Universe. What's your first Batman? Okay, now we just need to find the, th the thread. Wait, who, who plays our... Th oh, you played uh, Alfred in this one. You're not Michael Caine. Ah, shit. <laughs> Motherfucker. I should have gone to Hugh Jackman. You see me, you piece of crap? I should have gone to Hugh Jackman. All right, uh, t take me back. Go backwards. Go uh, Ben Affleck. Armageddon. Let's 
Will Patton, I'm taking a detour because I just I, I just want to this this episode is dedicated to Minari. Then from Minari, go ahead and take me to Stephen Yoon. OK, from Stephen Yoon, you're going to take me to. Um, nope. Then you're going to take me to Daniel Kaluuya. Then you're going to take me to Black Panther. Then you're going to take me to. There's got to be a way to get to Hugh Jackman from here. <laughs> Take me to Hugh Jackman. Take me to Hugh Jackman. Take me to Michael B. Jordan, to, to Creed 1, to Sylvester Stallone. No, wait, this, to Sylvester Stallone, to The Expendables... Two, I refuse to believe we can't get the Hugh Jackman from here. These are, this is Hugh Jackman's, like, these are his homies. <laughs> Look at this list, man. It never ends. Jason Statham. When in doubt, we go Hobbs and Shaw. Cliff Curtis, goaded actor. What the hell has Hugh Jackman been in? Where am I trying to go? I'm trying to go to... to I'm trying to get to Michael Caine so I could get to Aquafina. How am I even connected through the Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality, the Oceans movies? Okay, okay. So I, everyone shut the fuck up, Okay. We're trying to get to Hugh Jackman. It can't be done. It can't, they, they've never been in movies with anybody who's ever been in movies with each other. Hugh Jackman has been in all the X-Men movies. Hugh Jackman has been in Logan with Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart was also in Green Book with Anton Yelchin, who was in Alpha Dog with Emile Hirsch. Great, that's very helpful. Vanessa Kirby was in Mission Impossible Fallout with Army Hammer, who was in <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw. Hugh Jackman he was in The Candidate. Hugh Jackman was in The Greatest Showman. He was in a movie called Australia, featuring Nicole Kidman, who must be in a movie with Tom Cruise, who was in a movie with Vanessa Kirby, Mission Impossible Fallout. Tom Cruise, eyes wide shut. Nicole Kidman, Australia. Nobody remembers this. I didn't even see it. Hugh Jackman. Fucking Hugh Jackman. The Prestige. Michael Caine. <sighs> Miss Congeniality. Sandra Bullock. Ocean's 8. Aquafina, The Farewell. Now, I'm going to guess that was not the critical path, okay? Shortest possible, di possible distance was three. But we got there, and we got there with no assistance. That's tough. You went to Armageddon twice? I had to go to Armageddon twice because I accidentally went into Batman versus Superman. I made a huge mistake. I took a little... I, this isn't the worst I ever played. I, I, I just took the back rooms. Plus, I got to shout out Minari on the way. I mean, there's a lot of good movies in here. Beetlejuice, Birdman. Eh, 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 eh. Great movie. Minari. Nope. Great movie. Black Panther. It's pretty good. Creed, that's a good movie. Eh, the radio, Mission Impossible Fallout, eh, The Prestige. Even Miss Congeniality is okay. This is a long one. So it's like 50% good? Yeah, it's a better batting average than Hollywood. On average. Oh, don't start with me. Winona Ryder to Frankenweenie to D. Bradley Baker to Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Seven Rings to Aquafina. 
D. Bradley Baker? Who did they do craft services on, on Beetlejuice? Or on Frankenweenie? This shit is like Final Fantasy fourteen. I guess it probably starts with an X, huh? Metacritic score of 89. Looks like a PlayStation 3 game. It looks like a dung You know, it looks like some rainy woods. You know what I'm talking about? It looks like I'm trying to hide my suddenness. This looks like Shadow of the Colossus. It was originally Xbox 360 PS3. This looks like Azura's Wrath. It's an action hack and slash. It's not Bayonetta, is it? It's just Bayonetta 1. It, those do look like the guns. It is Bayonetta 1. I could tell from the pixels. I'm so sick of game to guess, man. I'm, I'm happy we start with the cover and the artwork, but... This is Limbo? This is Inside. This is the Godfather video game. Now I see it. It's not a man that looks like a triangle from Prison Architect. That's uh, Don Vito Corleone. Okay, I think I got it. Godfather for the N64. <laughs> Why is it so much funnier, the idea that it's on the N64 versus the PS2? Because the PS2 is like synonymous with Grand Theft Auto in some ways. So I could see like taking out a Tommy gun and going like that, 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 that. But the N64 is synonymous with like uh, collect-a-thon platformers where you have like a sidekick in your backpack. So I'm just picturing like Michael Corleone going like, yippee, yippee, wahoo. Connected. You go, oh, oh dude, you didn't get uh, all 100 cannolis at your daughter's wedding. So you haven't unlocked the golden Tommy gun yet. I've never seen The Godfather really, so. Okay, game the artwork. Hmm, game the artwork. Just waiting for the advertisement. Watch it. I think that train has sailed, honestly. My Vito Corleone must collect all six Infinity cannolis from his daughter's wedding to unite La Cosa Nostra and the five families in New York. I don't know what you are. That's Greedo. This is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. This is, this is Left for Dead. Sorry. Holy cow. That's gross, man. It's Shank. It's um, Duke Nukem 3D. I skip, I have no idea. It's alien hominid. It's just disgusting, man. It's Contra. Contra. It's Deadpool, the video game. Didn't know that there was a Deadpool video game, to be honest with you. It's pretty good. It's ass. It's really bad. Nobody knows it. <laughs> Apparently some people know it. I watched Jack Septic Eye play this. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest with you. It was removed from Steam. Deadpool. 
Just let's just get this one over with, man. It's earlier than 2013. Okay, bubble bobble. Oh, it's later than 1986, huh? One of these publishers is correct. Is correct. Hopefully, it's Sega. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get anything from Microsoft. <laughs> um, so a, th a third-person Sega game. It's um What's that game that really sucks but everybody said it was good because cool people liked it? Um and then the players from that game you got to play as them in Anarchy Reigns. You know the one I'm talking about. It's a Sega game from like maybe 2008, 2009. Mad World, that's it. Is it Mad World? Nope, it's not Mad World. Fuck you, Mad World's really good. I've never played it, but I've watched 10 video essays on it. Yeah, okay. Earlier than 2009? Oh, my mistake. It wasn't Sega. Or it was Sega, not Sega of America or Sega Europe. Have you ever played it? No, but I played Anarchy Reigns. It's like playing the extended edition. Um... Yeah, I would have to say that I don't see myself having a great chance here. <laughs> it's Sonic Adventure 2. Sega was involved in this one. It's earlier than 2001. It's... Jet Set... <laughs> it's... Didn't come out on the Dreamcast, but Sega made it. It came out on like the fucking Genesis or something, or the, the 32X, the Sega CD. It's probably Night Trap. I don't know. Just, I, okay, it's Alan Wake, American Nightmare. Can I get, can I get my clue? Load my clue, please. Load my clue. I didn't get a, it. It took my clue? I've been robbed. It's a Plague Tale Innocence. Okay, one time clue. Show the clue. It's a sports racing game from the late 90s. <laughs> that Sega was involved in. Sega Rally Championship. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> literally my last hope was to just hope that they called it sega something and there was only one guess that's pure luck it's actually pure luck uh i had never heard of this game before in my entire life but we take those skill not needed today Rolling Stone. I know it's not that because uh, that's Daytona, but anyway. It's a two word fantasy animation that is beloved. It's spirited away. Who the hell, who's the 3% of critics that gave Spirited Away less than a 6 out of 10? You have no joy in your body at all. Your inner child is just fucking dead. Like, th this doesn't mean that they hated Spirited Away. It just means that they gave it under a six. Who's, who's giving Spirited Away under a six out of ten? They're like you with Stardew? All right, well, fair. Suzume was mid? I'm not talking about Suzume. I'm talking about Spirited Away. It's like one of the best movies of all time. So let me get this straight. I'm trapped in a bathhouse. My parents have been turned into pigs. And there's a monster with no face that's eating everything. Yeah, I'd say I've been spirited away. That's the American remake. It's coming. 
coming out in 2025. Some people don't like anime? Yeah, it's me! It's not anime, it's spirited away. It, it supersedes the genre. And stay out of Woolworths. This is... Um, this is 1950s America. Pretty sure that's Peyton Manning's grandfather. This is like, well, you get, there's public transit, so it's, it's got to be like maybe even in the late 40s instead. But I, I'm going to put this like 52. Holy cow. <laughs> this looks like the 1960s to me. It's crazy. There was like a land grab in cereal. It's insane how many of these brands are still around. I mean, obviously, we haven't seen Claps cereal for a while, but like Corn Flakes, Cheerios, Shredded Wheat. Could, can I just, could you do me a favor? Could you shred it like a little bit more? Because that is not shredded, in my opinion. You've broken it apart into smaller segments, but I wouldn't say it's shredded. That's a damn brick. It looks like a roll cake. Wheaties. I mean, my basic to me, this looks like Andy Warhol would like make art of this. But Andy Warhol also was evoking nostalgia from a slightly earlier period of Americana, if I know anything about art, which I don't. So I'm going to say this is 61. 53. <laughs> I didn't know they had color printing back then. This shit is like actually the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Like this is the second Reich. So I'm going to say this is like 1914. I'm pretty sure this is Kaiser Wilhelm II right here. It's 1917. Okay, we take those. I don't really know what this is. But I do see a lot of women wearing this coat in Whistler. So this could be a man borrowing his wife's coat circa 2020 to outside of Filthy McNasty's. I'd be inclined to say from the denim... I'm going to say this is 79. Oh! <laughs> now this is back when men used to work for a living. Be inclined to say this is 1949. 1943. I didn't get 4,000 today? I had two perfects. <laughs> kind of hurts. 3,800 is still pretty good, but all right. I mean, we didn't have any, any that were complete disasters. We were just a little too off on, on a couple. Life goes on. Housel, presented by Denise Toth. I don't think this is fair. In fact, I, I know it isn't fair. But I just assume if your last name is Toth, you are very wealthy. It may not be true. But I bet if you took like a census of normal, like the average representative American, and then the, a, a similar sample of Toths, I bet the Toths would have a, a one standard deviation higher net worth. That's just my guess. There's just something about the last name, Toth. It's, it just screams old money to me. 
Why'd she spell it like that? I mean, she didn't. Her parents spelled it like that. Nice looking house. Big garage. Ample space. Lots of big yard. Lots of green space. Lots of trees. We're going to start this at 850. Depends where it is, obviously. That's too low. It's Flowery Beach, Georgia, 40 minutes from Atlanta. Okay, I didn't know that it was on um, whatever this is. <laughs> Green Lake. I mean, to own a boat, you got to either live on the boat or you got to be toth wealthy. So take me up to 1.25. 40 minutes outside of Atlanta. Okay, still too low. 7,000 square feet. And not a lick of interior design sense, but that's their cross to bear. It's not my house. Um, I know we do this all the time. I'm, I'm, I like when a house looks nice, but I also like when it looks functional. And like, this is not functional. Like, get this out of the live. Maybe it's professionally staged, which is fine. But, like, this is not something that you can have people over and be, like, sit on my, like, Art Nouveau daybed. Like, it's not, it, it's just not functional. And then also, another thing that bothers me, and this comes up all the time, a coffee table that is very hard to reach from this couch and impossible to reach from this love seat here. You're not doing anything with the coffee table. What's the coffee table doing? You need, a, you need a bigger table or you need to move the couches a little bit closer so people can actually put their coffee on it. 7,000 square feet is big. I would, I would take you up to, I mean, even at $300 a square foot, this is like a $2.1 million house. That's too high though. Okay. Six beds, four baths. See, this room, I don't really have a problem with. I see what they've done. They've got the green space outside. They got the the green, the the foliage rug, the green couch, the green accents. They did they did a better job in this room. Yes, okay. I don't really understand the purpose of the chair unless it's the obvious purpose. But one point seven five million. Bam! You're a Hausel Baron. Don't don't get me started on the concept of a laundry chair. Okay. We're dumb. We're not talking about the laundry chair anymore. We already got sidetracked enough. Okay. Time guests are starting off with a bang this week. To me, I don't know who this is, but I'm, before I even read anything in chat, I'm going to guess that this is Monaco because it looks like they do Formula One here. And then year-wise, okay, let me just say, where the fuck is Monaco? Monaco! I thought Monaco, there it is. I'm going to say this is Monaco, and they're like out here. Um, and this guy looks really familiar. Something about this. It's good. World's worst person. <laughs> Heartbreaking wedding photo of famed serial killer. I'm gonna be, I think I had a beer with this guy once. I think we used to hang out. Uh, and this looks like this looks like 1988 to me. It's 1983, and they're just guys. Thank God, I've been saved, and we were correct. It was Monaco. This strikes me as. A David Blaine installation in New York City in the early 2010s. Everybody was dressed. This, you, this sweater has not existed. I used to own several of these in the late 2010s. The pleated sweater with the collar has not existed for a long time. That's a, that, basically, that's like carbon dating. So I'm just assuming this is New York City because it looks like New York City. And to me, this looks like it's the Upper East Side near Central Park. Let's put us right here. 
And uh, I'm going to say this is circa 2010. It's 2013. This is the Apple Store. This isn't a David Blaine installation. <laughs> That's a really good guess, though, dude. This is the Jamaican bobsled team. Now, the Jamaican bobsled team performed in the Olympics in Calgary in 1988. Cool Runnings came out like 94. That's not Jamaica. That's New York City. Jamaica is right there. Okay. I'm going to say this is on the beaches of Kingston, Jamaica. And this is going to be 1988. Let's just say, well, the Winter Olympics take place in like February. So let's say this was 87 when they got approved. It was 88. We're on the wrong side of Jamaica, but still pretty good. This is George Reeves, the first Superman on screen. Circa, I mean, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that this is New York City, unless it's London. I'm going to say it's New York City, like 1954. And just put me close to Broadway. I'm going to assume that the first big movie theaters were also in the theater district. Now, don't, don't be a hater. I don't exactly know where Broadway is. The Friends of... Is it near the Friends apartment building? <laughs> is it near Nobu? I'm assuming there's a road called Broadway that probably runs this way. Eh, I've decided I've basically done enough looking here. Um, eh, this put me... Uh, where, where's Times Square? It's further up. Rockefeller, Times Square, probably up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Broadway. It's on 7th Avenue, right? Central Park. Okay, listen, I'm wasting too much time. Put me 1957. 1965. We were very close, though. Was it even on Broadway? 5th Avenue and Central Park South. Whatever. I'll take that. Not, not bad. Not bad. This is Norm MacDonald on stage at Yuck Yucks. This is an interesting one for me. I don't know if Yuck Yucks is also an American brand or it's just a Canadian comedy club. I'm going to say Norm MacDonald at this point, probably 30 years old even. Realistically, that puts this, let's call this 1990. And I'm going to say that this is in Toronto. I know it's a bit of a, a stretch here. It could also be Montreal. Could be anywhere, quite frankly. I'm going to say this is 1990 in Toronto. Oh, it was 1985, but it was Toronto. You want to talk about some educated guesses? Final score, 44-118. Now that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good score. And those were not gimmies, you know, that those were, we had to make some guesses on those. I'm proud of that. That makes up for the, tr the tradal catastrophe. Oh, we got, uh, look at this. It's quite an impressive house. You're just lucky it was Canadian? Bro, like, the, not all of them were Canadian. One of them was Canadian. Sometimes they'll be like, here's a, a, a picture from, like, the revolt of Bratislava. And I'm like, I think it's Slovenia. People are like, you idiot, it's Slovakia. You didn't know that Slovakia, January 6, 1971, 11.06 a.m.? Then I get one Canadian one and I get it right. People are like, of course you got it right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's a $625,000 house. It's in Littleton, Colorado. It's more expensive than that. It's a nice house. It's an $850,000 house. It's a single family home. It's a $1 million house. Five beds, five baths. Holy cow. <laughs> it's a big house. Was it like 4,000 square feet? 
1.5 million? Come on, it can't be that high. It's not that high. It's built in 2007. You can tell from the number of triangles. I'm just going to go out on a limb. I'm going to be very brave and say 1.25. It's 5,500 square feet. Who lives here? Family of 17? Is this a TLC soundstage? It's um, 1.3. This is my last guess. No, I got a couple. It's 1.35. You got it. <laughs> it's a big house. 5,500 square foot house. Doubled it in seven years. It's true cumulative, amul uh, cu cumulative annual growth rate of 10%. Um, no, 7%, my mistake. <laughs> I got the rule of 72 backwards. A little bubbly, thanks for reminding me. Minus property taxes. No, that's, don't, don't do the homeowner thing. I'm a homeowner. There's a couple of things you learn you can't do. If you have a mortgage, you don't get to say, I don't own my house, the bank owns the house. I, only re I used to say that. I thought it was a clever little joke. I didn't realize that it's actually like a dog whistle for NIMBYs or something like that. So I apologize for ever having used it. The other thing, homeowners will always be like, people don't understand how hard it is to own a home. You have like property tax sewers, utilities, unexpected expenses. Okay, if it's easier to rent than to own, then sell your fucking house. You're going to say no, then shut the fuck up. Obviously, it's, it's better to own a house than it is to rent in your situation then. If renting is easier and better for you, you would just do it. Otherwise, your, your choices in life prove that... People who rent should be complaining and you should just let them complain even though it annoys you. As I remember, there was the... I, I think I tweeted it. It was like two years ago before I was smarter. There was a guy that was like, Honestly, I own my house, but I wish I was renting because I didn't realize like how hard it is to own a house. There's all this maintenance. There's all these like hidden costs and stuff like that. And then like the next reply was like, okay, sell your house and rent. And he said, no, I would never do that. I like building equity. Okay, idiot. Then it's not better to rent than to own, dumbass. You just like are, think you're the victim in every circumstance here. It's like saying, you know, oh, I don't want to eat like pizza. I'd rather eat a salad. And then someone puts a salad in front of you and you're like, nah, I'm just going to eat the pizza. Then shut the fuck up, you liar. <laughs> you're, just, you're just lying. Which is fine to do on the internet, but just don't admit it. Like, okay, oh, fuck. Today I'd like to go from Palestine to Papua New Guinea. That's a long trip. We got 15 guesses to get there. I would take an airplane, but if I had to go through every country, I think I think I got a shot, okay? I'm going to go backwards on this one. So we're going to go Papua New Guinea to Indonesia. That's a gimme. Then we're going to go Indonesia to Malaysia. Then we're going to go Malaysia to Thailand. He's crazy. Then we're going to go Thailand to <laughs> Bangladesh. No, you know, I bet you just go to China. Go through big countries. China is not, it's not quite there. We need to find the connection. The connection might be Laos. Okay, that now gets us to China. And we're trying to go to Palestine. Okay, from China, take me to India. Oh, <laughs> and then take me to Pakistan, then take me to Iran,
Then take me to Iraq. <laughs> then take me to Jordan. He's actually crazy, dude. Holy cow. You're right. The, the miss, we didn't have to put in India. But otherwise, that was like the path. Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Laos, China, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Palestine. Dude, that was a great performance. <laughs> wow. See what I'm capable of if I don't have to know African geography? I could do anything. Or the Caribbean or Central America.